Hello and welcome to This and That. I'm Dave Lees. And I'm Jonathan Byer. Hi, Dave. Hello and welcome to The Skating Lesson. We are going to be discussing all things going on in the skating world this week. So if you're new here, please subscribe below and smash that like button. Very weird week. It's been um, kind of like Groundhog Day for the Olympics, especially with the time changes now that we want to have like the Asian streak is... Right. And NBC didn't change the times for Tokyo. Does anyone know why they changed it for China and not Tokyo um, and what it means for the Olympics coming up? Because uh, the skaters were obviously performing. Some people said it was about the swimming, but in the past, the gymnastics was moved. I don't know. I don't know why it was moved for Beijing and not Tokyo and this and that, but it's been very strange to watch. What have you been making of it, Jonathan? Well, I mean, I have to say, like, I'm not as into the personalities and the characters as you are. So, like, I'm curious to get your take on a lot of this stuff. I was watching the the women's all around in a mm -hmm. team event, rather, in real time. Mm -hmm. And now I happen to always love it, especially when I'm not invested necessarily. Like, sure, I know about Simone Biles, sure, go America, whatever. But um, I'm not really invested in anyone. So it was exciting for me to see so many things turned upside down. I'm not happy that it was done because Simone had to withdraw for whatever reason, but it was always the most entertaining, to, for lack of a better word, for me to just see all of the results turned upside down. With, and that included Great Britain in the bronze as well. Yeah. So th there was such like a, nothing anyone can do will change this outcome. And then the outcome was changed. So that was, that was riveting competition to me. I mean, it's terrible for Simone. Um, although, maybe not terrible for Simone. It, it's made her more famous, given her a new platform. And maybe given her a what to do with the next of her career, uh, I listened to the episode of The Daily uh, that was on Friday and they were interviewing a New York Times writer and she was even talking about how she had, on one of the previous shows I said that Simone's energy was different and people said that I'm always passive aggressive about her, you know, in the comments. And I said, like her, I thought her energy had been different. Well, this person said that her interviews were even getting different. They were getting shorter, which she has to do so many, completely understandable, but that her comments were really off. She's been saying a lot that she wanted it to be over. And she told this person said, what is like, you know, your best memory of your career? And she said, my time off. She told the New York Times before the event. Yeah. And then she had said just like a couple of different things that she was curious who she would be after gymnastics without gymnastics and to be having those thoughts already before the Olympics. I personally believe you can't prove it. It's like the chicken or the egg. What came first, the twisties or the burnout or, you know, I think the burnout came four, but did it impact the twisties? It's kind of the big thing. We'll never know. Uh, but I, I tend to believe that it likely uh, contributed to it in a big way. To get well, one of those, I'm, I'm glad to hear that sort of from your standpoint also. I find that the response to this has been very generational at times. I find that um, some, some older people I've talked to really clamped down and thought it was like a bad move on Simone's trip. This ideology that like, you persevere no matter what, or that the idea of success is like working yourself until you break. And it's so not the way I think many I, people are viewing this now. I, I don't know of a skating coach who I've heard speak about this, or I have heard talked about it over the last week who was supportive of Simone. Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. At any I, rank. I think that like, but social people around our generation are probably applauding it, talking about mental health and all this sort of stuff. Like, yes, injuring yourself would never be worth it. But in the people that are constantly in the lion's den that way, I think they're like, but that's what this is all about. Well, before I, people already like jump to the comments before, let me just like specify what I'm saying. Co I have not met a skating coach that was supportive of this. Now there are a couple factors here that we just need to like way out here. Gymnastics more dangerous than figure skating. Yes, figure skating quads, extremely dangerous. What she is doing, more people have been paralyzed yet. Right. I think she made the right call for herself. My thing is, you know, journalistically, and if you think like a coach, when did this happen? When did this start happening? 
When did the adjustments need to be made? And then look at her team about the pressure that's been building up, especially with the extra year, which there was nothing she could do about. But her team went all in with the GOAT. NBC went all in with the GOAT. I mean, I really, if you look about like the podcast, Gymcastic, even like they bet on Simone early. They were one of the first people that ever bet on Simone and their entire podcast journey really has been getting on that bandwagon and then Nasser, and that really built that, right? And other people in the media just followed and like took their lead in many respects, the bloggers, the other people, Twitter, and then NBC's calling her the GOAT, then everyone. And, and it really went like in that direction. And it's almost like everyone together jumped on and it became this huge thing, obviously, because of her talent and her amazing ability. At the same time, she is still human. Yeah. It was so much that if you said that Simone wasn't going to win five gold medals, you would be considered like crazy, right? right. Or f at least four, you right. know, the, you could debate. And you couldn't even say anything negative about her. She's flying out of bounds. She is the greatest of all time, right? Like she's right. flying out of bounds. And people were really, who aren't as invested in gymnastics were saying, wait a second, like this is becoming really weird. That Why is she flying out of bounds and they're pretending that it's the best ever? And then now it, NBC re-recorded their coverage that they were doing live. They have to, yeah. It, well, to cover their own behinds, Jonathan, because they were the ones that when she was not doing well, were like, she's still the greatest, she's gonna be the best. And you wonder, Simone said that she had told USA Gymnastics that she didn't wanna do this. Now, I think it was probably in the days before when they were already in Tokyo. Probably, if it's after prelims, it's in a too late situation. Before, you know, there's a time frame where you could switch someone on the team and it's too late. I believe that everyone believes Simone's hype. Everyone believed in her ability. And it's the kind of thing where when you're like, no, I can't do it. And everyone's like, you're gonna be fine. You're just nervous. You're just this, right? But it is, and I get it because she's always performed. She did perform at a world championships in 2018 with kidney stones. She wow. checked herself out of the ER to compete. So you're gonna think, of course, Simone's gonna do this. Whatever this is, it's gonna be, and I think it only became worse and worse and worse. Now, in terms of her bailing on the team, I mean, I don't care about, I don't give one iota what Piers Morgan says in general. Like I don't give any credence. General. To in general. <laughs> in general, right? I mean, and a lot of people have that attitude, but a lot of people have been confused because I think that rooting on Simone has almost been like a national event. And I think that we treat the Olympics in our country almost like, like we're preparing for a military exercise, right? Like we get prepared for the Olympics to dominate in this way that's not so different than political propaganda, right? And the way that it's featured on NBC and it's this whole machine. But I think that what Simone did upended the whole system with the, is it worth it? Right. From a, I think it's really easy to have these uh, documentaries on HBO, you know, about is it all worth it in hindsight, you know? And we see these champions who are doing so well. Right. And, you know, Apollo Anton Ono and Michael Phelps. And yes, they've had struggles, but they've also gotten a lot of rewards. To see Simone do it in the moment, I think is game changing that literally someone made it there and said, peace out. Now, I think the other thing is, there are a lot of people who are very sensitive about when did this start happening? And they may not be verbalizing it because it does take someone else's spot. You know, if you don't wanna go to an Olympics, when is it? I'm wondering if there should be mental health checks. You have to get physically cleared to compete at these events what about emotional clear? You know, at what point, I think we're really going into that direction. I think with all of these sports where if you have to get a physical, what about a mental health screening before you go? Because if someone's gonna be doing something so dangerous with that much pressure with the billions of eyeballs on, you may not be, like how come you can take, okay, if you smoke marijuana, they're like, no, you cannot be in the Olympics. Well, if your brain is literally smoking because of everything going on, why should you be allowed to compete? Right? right, like your own safety is what right. I want. Right. And is pot really about your own safety or is pot about, like it's, it's certainly yeah. not performance enhancing. So I don't know, it's, uh, or cocaine or any of this stuff, you know, it's, it's a thing. I don't know what she did in the moment. It did make the Olympics more interesting, unfortunately. I think well, that some people would have given us the- The line was really interesting, like, cause I, I have encountered some people that viewed it as like almost entitled 
like she just merely like gave up because it wasn't going well or something. And that's just so not the vibe I was getting. I, I get someone who is probably really tortured over this decision and really, well, I mean, has she announced that she's not doing any of the individuals at this point? AP Beam, that's the only one she is not officially withdrawn from. However, I would say that the thing that's really, the thing that I understand why people have that, not understand, but where I think that comes from is it was so quick to us on TV, how we saw this play out, right? She does a fall, she falls on vault, she goes back in, I'm out. And you're like, what? And it was not explained in real time. Dick Button wasn't crying on the TV. Like we were right. hanging out kind of as viewers. We saw someone, you know, Cecile looking at her Apple watch and it just, she seemed very calm when she said, I don't think I can trust myself. And we kind of heard her lip read. She walked back, she was done. And then she was cheering on the team. And I think our brains go, what? Right. What just happened? Right. It looks like, oh, did she, because she fell to the average viewer. But we don't, we weren't in the practice. You right. know, we weren't in the days before. We haven't seen the documentary footage about what was really going on. Right. When you like, if you have to really search for it because Tom Forrester hasn't given any interviews about what the heck happened because it probably could cost him his job. Well, I was gonna ask you that next. I mean, the first thing is already how they mishandled it in those immediate seconds. It was injury, it was a mental situation, it was a physical situation. Like they were clumsy out the gate with doing it in real time. I'm sure they got it in order for like the prime time thing that evening. Um, because I liked the um, commentators that were doing it live in the morning. Yeah. Um, but I'm curious now, like we've talked obviously about things Mitch could or couldn't do to make more out of his position in U.S. figure skating. Like, is this like, is this game over for Tom? I, my personal opinion has to be. Yeah. Has to be. What if you do a real deep dive into it, right? And that's why I think that this whole conversation about mental health or the twisties is important, but it's also distracting from a bigger conversation where Okay, on one, it's like he just bet the whole farm on Simone. And, but like, I think everyone thought that way, but that's not his job. Marta, abuse apologist, everything with her, did prepare the 12th person as if they were as important as the first place person. Yeah, and that's where you so think- that her work. And he did not do that. And I think that the staff and whoever is in charge in the future needs to have the routine constructions for consistency because they let these girls all throw in lots of skills and the execution wasn't there in the team finals. I personally believe that the other athletes were good enough to have at least contended, right? But they were flying out of bounds in prelims. They're flying out of bounds in podium training. Like the mistakes were not. I think Tom is gonna say, look, my biggest star got the twisties. The other one's mother is going to jail and it became public, not my fault. Mm. That's what he's gonna say. But, but people have had their issues with him long before this Olympics yes. also. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's what he's going to say. Okay. Of course, behind closed doors. He's going to be like, not my fault. What was I supposed to do? They got a silver. Right. Aren't we not all about winning? That's what he's going to say. And, the, and you already can tell. My take on it is, did Simone tell him that she didn't want to do this in the days up? From the New York Times article, she said that she was shaking couldn't sleep, shaking, crying, and couldn't sleep before the team final. Did she have a bit of a panic attack? And what is, is yeah, if I had the twisties and this, and I felt like I couldn't do it and the whole thing, did she have a panic attack in the village and did he not respond and say, you're gonna go do this? I don't know, but it sounded right. like that from the limited information we have. And we right. don't have more information because he didn't talk to the media after the team finals because they dared to question him after the qualifying. Well, guess what? That's the media's job. You right. made a lot of dumb quotes. Right. You And is everyone just supposed to think that you're the nice guy because that's the image you've tried to cultivate? Yeah, it was, they, came, they came in cocky. I don't think the, the athletes themselves, but the organization was so cocky and the commentary was so cocky that there was that part of me that was like, good. 
I'm well, glad it did. It didn't just go as they were telling us it's going. To. Tom has always been wanted to be seen as Mr. Nice Guy since he was an elite coach. If you go back to the vignettes on him on NBC from the '90s, it was that he was the nice guy. Mm. Why did his own top athlete that he ever had quit on him after the '95 Worlds before the Olympics? And she said, "I'm out. Worlds is the same as the Olympics anyway." Bye. Eerily similar to Sloan, if you want to think right. about it. And no one's talked to her. Everyone focuses on the two athletes he did have on the trial at the trials who didn't make it, who are like de defending him and living their own experiences and this whole stuff. And weren't we so transparent? Well, you didn't say you were going to go in rank order ahead of time. So you going in rank order after isn't more transparent. Right. That's, that's just your decision making. Right. And you're saying, but that was fair. Well, if you tell everyone ahead of time, we're going to go by rank order this year. We go by rank order. That's transparent. Okay, for better or worse. Because this was a controversial team selection. Yes, he didn't, if you go by the algorithm, he didn't go by the top scoring team. Okay. That was the first thing that he did. What would have been different in a top scoring if he had? You know, Michaela Skinner would have been on the team actually. Okay. Now, I was not in favor of necessarily putting her on the team. I actually would have looked at someone like Leanne Wong or I mean, even Grace, but I think the preparation for it, because we wound up needing someone on bars as a backup. And right. Skinner is not someone that I trust on bars of beam, but she can hit in a final situation at times. So I think there was sort of the odd entry in. It was Grace McCallum. Okay. Really Grace McCallum. And honestly, in the months before, Jordan Childs wasn't expected to be in the conversation as much as she was, and that changed things. But it's just one of those things that people will debate forever with this team. And but again, they were putting all of their bets on Simone. The fact that they lost, they had this specific thing happen. The biggest star of the Olympic Games pulls out and her head coach doesn't talk to the media or do any damage control. I think that should lose him his job alone. Okay. The fact that he wasn't willing to speak to the media and hasn't really said anything since until he did a Facebook thing 24 hours later when you already see how this spin is out. Are people right. behind Simone or not? People jumped behind the mental health thing. It could have gone the other way. Right. Okay. Depending on who said what first, right? And people on social media made anyone who's ever competed or seen a therapist just jumped on and it became that you could not say anything otherwise. Right. Would be villainized. Right. And wow. you, right. He did not do that. What if it went the other way? What if? People on Twitter Wanted said- an entitled move. Yeah, entitled yeah. quit on her team and that went viral first. Yeah. What if that was the immediate response? Where was Tom? Right. Give. And I think, in my opinion, yes, he lost his job in that moment for me. Okay. You're, go you're gone. You, right. you didn't support her. Because Simone gave some really strange quotes afterwards when she's still reeling when she, she didn't explain what was really happening at the press conference because she's probably not on this earth about what right. just happened. I just pulled out of the Olympic games and they're asking, she's like, well, I need to work on my mindfulness. And you're like, what, 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 you know? To me, he lost his job at that moment. Wow. You're done. I don't see how he's very lucky. Sunisa Lee capitalized on this moment. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah. Although I have to tell you like, Sometimes I was really rooting for that Brazilian gymnast. Well, she her floor routine, I wish she hadn't stepped out twice, but it was quite exciting. I was like all about it. Well, I mean, she's great. And she's had uh, a number of ACL injuries before it. There was no bad person to root for. Right. Uh, Angelina Monikova was a great gymnast. Sunisa Lee, it was an interesting competition. Unfortunately, because Simone wasn't in it, it was more competitive. Yeah. And that was interesting to viewers because when right. Simone competes, she's actually so far ahead that it would be like a race for the silver and bronze, which isn't as gratifying. They have done it in skating before. Like the most like egregious I felt was actually 2010 with Yuna. It was mm -hmm. so clear how ahead she was so it was as if they never even like had us engage with Mao skating. Mao, who did three triple axles and had these cool programs and all this sort of stuff, like who I, again, as I've discussed, will go back and watch from 2010 more than Yuna. But like when they when they angle it that way, you you become so disinterested in all the other athletes. 
Yeah, I mean, look, and some of that was politics. If you go back to that scoring, because Yuna lost because of politics, but she did have a boost. Because, I mean, if you're going to tell me that her spiral sequence was getting, it was worth the scores that she got. Granted, right. she deserved to win those Olympics, but by, right. by the margin, I don't know. Right. Uh, um, and how did that affect Mal? But yeah, it was just, a, it, it's been a crazy event and it's been ah. an interesting event um, without the crowd, everything, it's kind of faded into the background, but I don't think it's a successful event for NBC as they wanted uh, viewers, you know, ratings wise, but um, look, we, you watched probably one of the defining moments in sports, whether you realized it was going to be- Exactly, a, exactly. I imagine she will have a documentary series about what happened someday in the future. Right. She could probably have speaking engagements and whatnot, and this could give her an entirely new yeah. avenue. I mean, there are so many directions that she could really talk about once she collects herself and figures out- her. Yeah, in many ways, this chapter's only just begun. I think so. Look, she could talk about mental health, an organization that put winning over everyone else. She's an abuse survivor. Uh, the media going crazy behind you when you're still a human being, you know, talking about hype. I mean, the stuff that she could go out. It's interesting. It could be a very interesting field for her to go in. So yeah. I, I don't think that this damaged her at all. Uh, Even if you're the um, sponsors? No. Okay. Reaction to this has been so positive i i am i don't know what happened like did, because i've been watching it live like did they take off all of her commercials in real time because it wow. just seems gauche i mean i don't know um and what does that mean for those companies i don't know you well know? remember in pyeongchang we saw like ashley skating to a visa commercial right before we watched karen compete you know so I don't know um, because I've been watching on the NBC Olympics live. Right. Um, right. Speaking of live streams, they have got to advertise the live streams for like Glacier and something better, especially if they're US figure skating events. There was a live stream for Glacier, someone on F Skating World, the, those videos look from the stream look like they were cut, you had to pay for it. The thing is, is like, there's this website, Salira TV, and it seems like it's a, I don't know if it's a fake website. I tried to sign up for it once and it wasn't real because they were advertising for Milwaukee and people were watching a live stream and I didn't get the link in the first. And it just seems um, like it's some sort of bot or haphazard or they take your credit card. Info. I don't know if, if my identity is stolen in months, I, I, I don't know. It, just, okay. <laughs> it didn't seem real to me afterwards, but I was thinking two moment in a mad dash to watch skating live. but. For Glacier, we didn't get to see all of it. And the pairs, Cal Lang and Johnson actually competed. So- You want to see it. <laughs> but, and they did okay. Um, they won overall. Uh, you know, uh, Chelsea and Danny won the short program, and but they won overall. You have to think Cal Lang and Johnson, the rumor is whatever kept them out of the world and has kept them off of the selection pool and uh, kept them out of the Grand Prix is being resolved. So tentatively, I think they get the TVD for Skate America based on the fact that they went They can out. resolve whatever semantics they need to. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's semantics or if it's okay. a situation, but it has to be relatively minor, whatever it is. Yeah. And the fact that they've been able to keep it quiet also, Impressive. What, what hair? Yeah. <laughs> like, have you? There has never been a rumor in skating that has like been kept as tight-lipped as this. So, right. hats off to them for that. Yeah. <laughs> have tried. <laughs> okay, to find yeah, it. Yeah. And uh, all right. I mean, I think they're we'll gonna see. Yeah. I'm intrigued to see the video from that event. Yeah. I, I mean. And, and Chelsea and Danny only did the short. So, but, um, you know, everyone I think is gearing up for Cranberry in a couple of weeks and that, you know, uh, Taras and Morozov are supposed to be coming. So it's supposed to be a good field. I'm gonna try to go up uh, in a couple of weeks for that. So yeah, it's been, it's, it's kind of like gonna be the real start and that's going to help determine who goes uh, to Nebelhorn. We did see Audrey Shin return to competition. Now she had had a stress fracture in her leg 
and this was her start, and I'd forgotten her name when we were talking about the TBD to Skate America. Looking at her here, she did uh, finish. You, you're, you're saying no. Really? You're saying yes? I'm saying yes. Why are you saying no? Well, she was one that, like, we had talked about her in some of, like, our, like, um, Grand Prix preview sort of stuff. You know, she had that sort of surprise moment at Skate America. She backed it up okay at the at the exhibition there, but it was sort of like, was the cleanest and least offensive and took opportunity when it arose. Um, she didn't really back it up at Nationals for me. And she didn't really inspire me here. Like I thought the jumps were a little low, a lot of like cheated landings. Mm -hmm. um, she did not win here, right? Like Second. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't see it. I didn't. Well, I didn't see like a spark that inspired me. If I'm now on like some sort of selective committee, I think there are other people that are doing something more interesting that like might be more important to get in there. I don't know. Tell me what you think. Okay, we have like Sierra Veneta, Gabby Izzo, Gracie was in the conversation. We'll talk about that situation in a bit, and then we have Audrey Shin. I think of those four. Audrey has had the body of work and the potential that I would look at to give that spot to. Just looking at- I guess you're right, because I'm still um, considering the juniors and they're not gonna put a junior in there. No, because they're going to the Junior Grand Prix. So- no, I would put, I could make someone of the juniors do it twice. <laughs> like I would put, I would put Audrey in. Okay. Because four US skaters points. Uh, you look at her, this is her first outing. She was behind. So if she can keep on this trajectory in two weeks, do better at Cranberry and then keep going. What I notice is that they've been trying to get rid of her leg wrap. And I know it's been one of the problems of her career in terms of her jumps, but they've been working on it more seriously. Uh, she works with Tammy Gamble. I know that she's working with Victor Pfeiffer. If you notice when the jumps went better, her leg wrap was less prominent. When the jumps were poor, the leg wrap was very prominent. Yeah. I think she needs time. I think she needs mileage, but I think that she is one of the only US skaters that may go beyond this year. Okay. <laughs> the top. That makes me want to give her a spot. Okay. A, a nod. I thought that her stamina was pretty impressive, that she trains her program and that if they can keep working on this stuff, I would give it. She needs more height in those jumps. She did have a stress fracture in her leg. So if she can keep being healthy, that's one that I would look at. As opposed to, because we haven't seen her max. When we saw Gabby Izzo, we were saying that this looks to be the best she can do. Right. Or cl very close to the best. And see, and in my head, Dave, I was still thinking that they could give it to like Lindsay or Isabeau or something like that. but. Lindsay's going to the Junior Grand Prix, so Lautova would want me to say, yes, send Lindsay to Skate America. Yes, send her. But um, I, I don't it would think- be too, It would be too back and forth between- I think they're gonna try to give every skater points is what I think that they're gonna try to do. And in that sense, I would send Audrey thinking that Lindsay's not really in it. Yeah, because we did see Gracie this week. And what yeah. did you think about that? So Gracie was skating much, much better towards uh, end of May, beginning of June. From all reports, <laughs> video streams, if you've seen her, she was doing better. She went to Lombiel and I don't know, she was there to work with Gislan. And I don't know if that threw it off. I think she had a couple of days after, but she then came back and was not in the shape she was when she left in terms of doing it in a program mentally. How she's, Gracie's biggest problem in competition and in practice is when she makes a mistake uh, keeping going in the training. Right. Keeping going in the program and not giving up on herself. And I think a lot of that is that she, Gracie Gold does not have a coach that's of a higher level than she is. Gracie's an immense talent and she doesn't have a coach with the same stature. Right. So, and, or experience and by experience level, stature. And I think coaching someone like her who's in this situation where they've had so much success and they're coming back and they have potential, that would take a really experienced coach. 
Now to find one that could be stern and positive enough would also be obviously a challenge and you know funding and things like that. If you see her practice, she can actually do everything. And she's starting to do it in programs again, which she wasn't in. But the thing is, competition's gonna be another game. And if you compete how you skated two weeks before, this was how she looked two weeks before. Okay. So, you know, she was kind of changing up the program and the order was not what she really has planned. And they scaled back the triple, triple, do a triple, double, which worked for her really well in the short program. I think she probably should not have done the free. She did the short. Oh, let's get ready. It was lovely. It was a nice program. Like she had some nice height in the jumps. I think that would have been a great moment to call it and then go for the next one. And maybe she felt that she wanted to get a free out there and just do it. I think that politically it reinforces the narrative that, oh, Grace can't do it. Right. Which may or may not be the case. Right. right? Um, I think to get to be, I wouldn't want to put Gracie out into competition until she's really nailing in practice. I would want to give Gracie the opportunity to go out there and just nail it. Yeah. But in her career, she often struggled in summer competitions, but knowing that she is actually skating better than what she looked, and I have to say, I think it takes her completely out of the conversation for Skate America. I think it keeps her how she did. Um, because, it, and that I think that she can go and win the, you know, the qualifiers for nationals. She could certainly go do that. But at the end of the day, I don't know what her goal is. And if there's uh, the same old story, yeah. She was skating like she was going for an Olympics, which was how good she was looking. And when she's on, she can look that good. But then when you see it in competition and what she can do out there, I don't think there's any way they're gonna send her. Right. Even if she did like a clean nationals. It would be really hard to pull her off the team. Yeah. Get everything. But I <laughs> Depending on what happens, look, if everyone's a train wreck at nationals and Gracie goes out there and nails it, they're gonna send her, right? But I think there'd be a, there would be a strong discussion and committee meeting about body of work. And it would be a Ross Minor situation. Right. right. In reverse. Right. Of course, you'd be seen as attacking someone who's already been through a lot. So if you wanna- But are you there to prop someone up or are you there to find the best team, you know? I don't know, the Olympics are a TV event. So, uh, right? But, you know, the whole body of work argument that they're instituting, they could do whatever they want. It would be really hard to get for her to get the scores and the marks, but I think she has the opportunity to push forward. And if she does start training and doing everything and believing in herself, then, you know, this is certainly better than we saw her at any point in previous seasons, but it seems like she has a place to go in terms of self-belief and confidence. In the warm-up, she was doing the jumps. Right. So, or she was doing more of the jumps, but she does pop, you know, and that's been a story of her career and that's years and years and years in the making of, you know, when Gracie makes a mistake, especially on the first Lutz, you know the second Lutz is gonna be popped and then you know the, the throwaway jumps after that are supposed to be so easy for her mentally she can't recover to pull in and do them right i mean like the sow and the toe are like no brainers for gracie right but when she makes a mistake on the lutz she's frustrated with herself and and then those go away so i don't see how they're gonna send her yeah so um based on strategy just going out there if, I think that if she just did the short and then like maybe she did cranberry and then like you'd at least keep her in the conversation. But I think that this- uh, We'd be more intrigued instead of already knowing. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I see it as a tough, I, I don't understand the motivation. Well, I think, I think she is certainly capable of going out at nationals and having a great skate and having a moment for herself and maybe going out on that. But if she wants more, I think it would be hard to do it in her current situation without yeah. Yeah. a more experienced coach. Yeah. Because again, I think there is that top cluster that will stay clustered enough that it will be hard for her to break into it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I don't know. 
It's uh, how about Yarrow? So Yarrow really. I wanted him to have more of a moment, Dave. Like I, it was interesting. What? The short program was very exciting. We got the quad flip double, and um, I thought like he did um, the Bee Gees. Yeah, like it was. It was just enough cheese that it was like charming. But I think he like, needs to go more. That it was cringy. I think he needs to go a little bit more into the cheese. Oh, you want more cheese? I was like, the, to me, he was like just towing the line of. Well, whatever. because there were parts of the program went, performance went in and out. Yeah. Okay. He almost needs an arm going into the flip or something. Or <laughs> I don't know. I would amp it up because if cheese is what you're going for, go, go all in. Go all in. Okay. He does have a fun factor and he believes in it. He's got those great jumps. Yeah. That quad flip, incredible. Uh, he did, Collins with it in the free, right? Like, but also still gave us two quads. quads. He's been having boot problems. I talked to Todd last night. So now they're trying to push ahead and get the stamina and the consistency and really go for this. He's supposed to get citizenship in November is the current. Okay. They're becoming close, but is he the TBD for Skate America? I, to me, that's a no brainer, yes. If he can go. Two. He's the one that's like, now between nationals and this was enough in my opinion to have earned it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's doing better. He's showing up, not popping a million things. I'm looking at him and if I'm Vincent and if I'm Jason Brown, I'm getting nervous. Yeah. For different reasons. Jason had the injury, puts him back. Oh my God, if Yara goes to Skate America and nails, that would make national so interesting. Yeah. You get this boy to one Grand Prix and if he performs, well, if he doesn't perform, doesn't change anything. Exactly. Does he go to Neville Horn? Right? That might be Rush. I, because I, I, it sounds like Vincent did well enough this summer. Well, Vincent did well enough very early in the season. And how many times have we seen Vincent do well enough? I'm not trusting Vincent if, because of the people around him, right? That are ever changing. No one is taking accountability for this. And how come you go to a world championships and then you put a message out that you were injured and couldn't really skate before and they didn't call an alternate and we don't know, like what, what is going on here in this right. situation? Right. I have huge red flags about that. Yeah. Well, excuse me, the qualification for the Olympics is on the line. This is almost like what happened with the Simone and who didn't pull her out of team finals and what happened? Are you going to go to Nebelhorn and then put another post up that, oh, you had an ankle injury and didn't really think that you could skate? Like, what if the U.S. doesn't solidify the third spot? That, I think, is a point in Yaro's cap. Yeah. Feather in his cap. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I just have big questions about, it seems like we've been on this roller coaster ride with Vincent, right? And if it all ends well, we bet on the right horse. And if it doesn't end well, you could say, well, there were 90 million signs that this was going to be a car wreck at the end of the... But if he just needs to be top six at Nebelhorn, like, I feel pretty confident Vincent can do that. Kind of, but he didn't make the free skate at Worlds. I know, but in general, like, the international judges have begrudgingly, like, put him in high positions. Have they? Or when he is stood up, you know, he gets the base mark. Well, I'm going to say, like, the PCS of Yarrow, I, I enjoy watching Yarrow more than I enjoy watching Vincent, but I don't think the judges are going to report it that much differently. Well, if you put Yarrow to Nebelhorn instead of Vincent, at least you have four contenders instead of three. Mm. I think either one could get the spots. Yeah. I would rather have four options than three options. Same. You are said, they allowed to do that? If you send Vincent, you already know who the Olympic team is in September and why does anyone keep working? Right. Because Torgashev here, triple toe, triple toe, double yeah. axle. And then yeah, a double axle and think, yeah, not, not possible. Not possible for him yeah. to get it together. So. Tomoki's already been a little all over the place. Tomoki's not. Jimmy like, Ma, more of the same. Camden, more of the same. Like everyone in that middle pack has solidified their middle packness. Um, and really it's Yaro's to switch it up. Should he choose to do so? I would look at sending Yaro over Vincent. Okay. Just, I, I like his jumps. They're cleanly rotated. You can Why can't you send both? Because you send one. It's literally just one person. 
So it's going to be Mariah Bell, Alyssa Liu, or Amber Glenn for the ladies. <laughs> Who are you betting that on there? Tough, that is a tough choice. <laughs> Who are you sending? I'm sending Mariah, probably. We haven't seen her compete. I know. I'm not Mariah until we see her compete. Yeah. Well, we've not really seen the other two compete recently. If I'm Mitch. I'm requesting a well-stocked bar in my hotel room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> until the end of that. I'm requesting a skate off with you those. Know, whose dad is calling other coaches and they're, you know, she didn't get into the cricket club. So that's not happening. Right? Are you going to bet on that horse? Mariah, I think, is the safest bet. Yeah, more of the same again. Like, you know what you're going to get. Or Amber, who could be great. Uh, who you don't know what you're going to get, in my opinion. Either, I think Mariah and Amber, great shot at getting the yeah. spot. If they go with Alyssa, you know, if they go with Alyssa too early, I think it's a shot to either, to end her Olympic. Yeah, career. yeah. Because if she doesn't win Neville Horn or have a great skate, She's out. I'm not saying she's out, but it's going to be much harder for her to climb up because this whole narrative about her improving her PCS and improving everything, I think it, it puts her under the gun a little bit sooner. So who do you send? Are you risky and send Yarrow and Amber or do you go with more mainstays and do Vincent and Mariah? My gut says they'll go Vincent and Mariah. Yeah, I think that's what they'll do. I think they should go. Yarrow, Amber, switch it up. Yarrow and Amber. Yes, yes. That would be the biggest opportunity for growth in the state. Amber, triple axle in free, not in short. Okay. It's putting Let a lot go. of pressure on them, but the, in many Better ways. Better go for it in the free and say in the short, just do a double. Just yeah. be clean and get through it. Because again, it's going to be a competitive match. I know it's a. It will be tough. I think you're right. Like they have the opportunity to make an edgy choice that like grows their program, or okay. they can dig in their heels and just go with what they've always done. And I think you're right. I think they're going to choose Vincent and Mariah. But here's why I would go with Amber. She can do a triple triple, and we know it in the short program. Mariah Bell's triple triple is more inconsistent. Yeah. When give Amber something to prove. Like Amber has, she's hungry for this, I think. So that's so, someone who's going to compete more aggressively than Mariah Bell. Amber, you pulled from Worlds. And if you at least give her the chance, that's a whole new option that you have. Right. Because we kind of already have seen what Alyssa and Mariah can do. Right. Mariah is great. She's more of a free skater than a short program skater. She's not a bad choice for Neville Horn if they send Mariah Bell. She's going to be in the top six. They're going to send Mariah, but I think they should send Amber just to keep your options open in terms of the depth. Right. Well, and let Amber show you what she can or cannot do. If Amber also goes and bombs, you do have your information. But Amber to not be in the top six the, it would be unusual. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think you're really jeopardizing the, that third spot by sending Amber, but you do you do stand to learn a lot about how she competes because you're you're not, you're not about, letting us see it. You learn more about Amber than you do about Mariah. In yeah. my, yeah. you already know what we're going to get from Mariah. Right. There's been this like unusual skater. Yeah. That, we don't know because we have not seen. But this all depends on you have to verify them. How are people going to look at Cranberry and how are they going to look at Champ Scam? Right. Between Mariah and Amber. Those are who? Yeah. I don't see the long term potential in Alyssa. At this point, with the jump technique and. Well, like you say, more exposure at this point may be not ideal. It might be more ideal for that camp to wait longer. I want those triple triples clean and popping and high before I'm trusting her because I don't think the quad and the triple axle are, are coming. Right. So, so take more time and get it. More time and get those triple triples. Yeah. 
It's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Not senator. All right. Yeah. That's, uh... The Vincent Yarrow thing will be interesting. I don't know if they're looking at Yarrow with, with as much interest as many of them. I feel like we forgive Vincent Zoe like 75,000 times for like yeah. a lot of messiness. Yeah. And... yeah. Yes, he's in Colorado. Yes, he works with the right people. And but if Vincenzo were to bomb again, the article is right there of all the stuff we, all of the information that everyone has had about right. this situation for a decade. Right. Okay. It'll be a lot of pressure for either guy, especially. We'll see. You know what, Lucas Broussard in the juniors was lovely. Okay. He was lovely. He was lovely. Brooks, he's growing into those limbs, but I thought that the characteristics were lovely. Let's keep pushing him. <laughs> yeah, let's huh. keep pushing Onward and upward, yes. And what about that Lindsay Thorngren triple axle attempt? So she was working with hot Sergey and Benoit, which is funny because Victor <laughs> was here for the last month. Okay. Oh my God. Victor, you know, they've worked the skater that moved from one, there's so much like inner New Jersey drama that like happens between mm -hmm. the rings. But this girl, Mia Bargat, got her like clean triples for the first time. And she was working with Roman and Victor, who um, Lindsay was supposed to work with while Julia was on vacation. But Mia got her first um, clean triples for the first time. So Dang, yeah, in the short program, I saw that. And the little Sasha Fegan won the free, who's, he like wins everything here. He's like one, two, watch for. He skates okay. like baby Victor, kind of. Okay, so, okay. Um, he works with Roman and Nina. Uh, anyway, Lindsay, that was the best triple axel attempt that I think she's ever done. Yeah. And she was more twist skating and pre-rotating off of the toe and it worked uh, yeah. for her. And she was the most vertical because Axel has never been her best jump out of all of them. The rest, I thought she was performing more for her. She's not the biggest performer, but right. I saw more performance than she gave in Milwaukee and that yeah. she usually does. It seems like they tried to add it. I know Benoit is coming at the end of the month. She does a lot of triple triples and they gotta get them clean in order for her to be in the conversation. Yeah. But it was a, it was an impressive skate. The voiceovers continue to be. Yes, but also then we were seeing some even um, the girl skating to Moonlight Sonata. <laughs> oh, she did, yes. Um, there were there were Moonlight quotes being spoken over that program as well. I'm like, this really didn't need it. I promise, you would have been fine. Draft Audrey's free. I thought it just had too many arms that didn't say anything. And they're like, and the Moonlight is among us. And I was like, oh god. And it was such a slow version of Moonlight to start. And well, I don't I don't understand why people just don't use the the original because it comes with so many different like tempi and like all these different kinds of colors you could use. Like so I don't know why they use these like souped up like video game sounding arrangements with and then these like magical moon quotes over them. But, but I thought Lindsay did better. She yeah. uh, look, she's a fighter. She, this is her third or fourth competition already and she and, and doing clean like she, she's like on the right trajectory so yeah, she has she has to get those triple triples clean though rotate no. to be no. yeah. but i mean it was so incredible about Lindsay. she's going to a junior grand prix she did a senior long here but i guess she just pull out that choreo sequence and you know yeah, that seems like that would that would confuse me a bit that would be a little. It's bit. not a problem for Lindsay Thorpe, right? But unless again, she's proving she can do a senior Grand Prix like a TBD State of America, no problem. She just inserts the steps. <laughs> Julia could have her do that program three times in a row. Yeah, exactly. That's what we're saying. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just go. <laughs> just letting you know. Amazing. Amazing. Um, and Kehlani Crane was at. Glacier and did a very uh, good short program, won it there. Yeah. I think she will get uh, a spot for Australia. Yeah. For sure. I would think so as well. It was yeah. interesting. We also saw the Kol Yada short program. Yes. Now, when I heard Nutcracker, I was like, there's so much music in Nutcracker. They didn't use it. They only used like, the one theme and they just 
kept repeating it, like the da di da di da 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 da. And I was like, okay, there is, there's a full ballet here, you guys. <laughs> like, maybe skip a couple pages. Let's do something different. And then they were repeating it like an awkward loops. And I, it was, a, it was a missed opportunity. I thought the idea of him doing Nutcracker could have been inspired. It does not seem to be that way based on the music selection and what I saw. Choreographically, it was hot garbage. Yes, it was However, just so general. Yeah. He has a balletic line and gorgeous turnout. You can't make him look bad. So why are you trying? <laughs> I thought it was fine. I yeah. thought it was not interesting. Right. But not offensive. Yeah. But you have someone who could be doing something iconic. That is a guy with a vocabulary like movement that I would think someone choreographing to a balletic piece of music would find a dream come true. And instead it was just like general, generic, big sweeping arm. And probably where he should be in terms of consistency for this part of the season. Yes, well, the two quad attempts in the short, which we've not always seen. I mean, it didn't go so great, but it, it didn't like, pop. Look, his Sal looked like he was on a very severe pattern and turning out of both jumps the way he did. Um, uh, he looks like where he probably should be. If he were being doing a clean short at this point of the season, that's a little scary. That's yeah. a little, uh, Especially for him. For him, yes. Yeah. So yeah. Mentally where he needs to go. <laughs> when so, he needs to be there. Uh, and I yeah. felt this was a program about trying both quads mm -hmm. in full effort versus maybe creating a magical moment. Yeah. Hopefully we will see that quad left. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. I know. Uh, but yeah, I know. A great unicorn or like a Brigadoon or something. <laughs> yeah. Still think he will go back to the Nureyev program for the Olympics. He has to. He Still might. think we'll see the Schindler's List. Jason will do the Schindler's List. And then all of a sudden, Chloe Dow will like mess up at a competition. All of a sudden, we'll be back. And we'll be so inspired to do the that would be the original choreography anyone's guess you know you know how this thing works where we'd love to just change it okay again i was like so give us a short the same way he totally could he totally could have remember when ashley did samson and delilah and then she did the romeo and juliet we went back to samson but it wasn't the original composition it was like oh yeah it was just like a weird medley <laughs> of movements <laughs> Again, when you think you can just pick up something from one program and just insert it onto the music of another, it just tells me how much you were paying attention to the music to begin with. Excuse me, Ashley paid attention to music. I I, mean, I don't know if she, listen, John. Sometimes she, three seasons in a row, she paid attention to that music, yeah. Listen, okay. <laughs> she knew Moulin Rouge backwards and forwards, okay. Yeah. <laughs> chin, chin, dear Lord, okay. Oh my goodness. So are you excited for the second half of the Olympics? I feel like, you know, I'm, once we get through the gymnastics, then it's like, okay, we can just like relax and watch some rhythmic and watch some synchronized swimming. And, and I did, Yes, I was gonna ask you, so like I'm going through NBC Premium where they have like the other sports category, which is of course where we usually find like figure skating back in the day and like the Barnes and Noble, right? Like <laughs> I have to look for the other sports section. Um, but I can't figure out where they would put synchronized swimming because it's not listed as its own sport. Is it just going to come up under swimming? Because I haven't missed yeah, it. It's the Olympics website. Okay, the website, not the app. Yeah. Okay, okay. Because I've been watching some diving. The synchronized diving was interesting, but Tom you know, Daly and Maddie winning. Yes, that was the moment. Apple Bianco. Uh, watch some volleyball. Watch some table tennis. Watch some dressage the other night. A lot of people watching dressage with the weird music going on. Yeah, it's just, I mean, basically a line dancing horse. So it's like a horse doing the Macarena. <laughs> like, Not that dissimilar to figure skating. Just saying, just yeah. saying. <laughs> but so I'll be excited to see some of the individual stuff for the gymnastics. But also I do want to see some synchro. You see know what some of things we're going to see? Vanessa and Eric's debut at a small summer competition. So I'm Ooh, so excited. We are seeing that next week? Yes, I think it's next week, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah that'll, be, that'll be fun. My body is so ready for this. <laughs> <laughs> are your emotions? Can you buckle up and handle it? Okay. Oh, and um, the current status is Megan Duhamel is working at the camp with Bruno Massa in Germany. Oh. 
Aliona's baby is there with the husband. Okay. Is not so. I think she and TJ are still a thing potentially. What this is? You can ask when she arrives in New Jersey. As the blade turns, all right. <laughs> Hold it, edge. It looks sexy, everyone. <laughs>